All right, so in this video, what I'm going to be doing is going through how an enhanced IK rig works. Um, when it's all tied together, this one uh, acts in a method where you get a lot of fluid movements working through the body just by controlling a couple of your major controls. So if you'll notice what's been going on here, as I move the leg control, you could see how the body compensates for the movement. Um, you could see how it's even running into the other foot. That's because this foot isn't tied down with an IK and was just locked in FK mode. So if I move like this, you can see that pretty much everything works in an intuitive manner still. Um, so the reason why the other leg was in FK mode was, was simply because this works in both IK and FK, even though it's called enhanced IK. Um, it enhances the entire rig overall to function in a way that the entire body will get the movement. So you could see that there. Um, and another great thing to know is that this is all based on the location of your pole vector in space. So it comes with an automatic no flip pole vector. If you could see how when we move this, the pole vector will also move around. Let's rotate that out so it makes a little bit more sense. So you could see how the pole vector moves around. A sidekick is very easy to accomplish. Flipping will occur if it's put in a position that's not natural, but it will always bring itself back to what is possible. If we rotate this out, you can kind of see where we actually put the knee and the leg and how high it actually is. So those are things to, of course, keep in consideration. Since it adds a little bit more control um, and it's more anatomically based. It's gonna sir. It's going to give you some mid results a little bit differently. Um, but one way that this is an improvement on the current system is if we were to do a walk cycle, you could kind of see how you have that curve there, naturally happening throughout the hip. And as you move the hip over, it stays rotated until this one comes back around and you could key it again. The only thing that's not taken care of by the system is um, the snapping effects. So in the arm, the way this system works is if we were to rotate this arm up and down, you can see that our clavicle control is also moving. And we still have freedom to control it and completely break it if need be. Once again, both in the FK mode and the IK mode. So let's go here. So this is based on the position of where the arm is and where the elbow is in space, not the wrist. So we can rotate everything up and down and you'll see how everything moves. It's uh, easier to show you in FK. So if we rotate the wrist in, nothing happens. Move anything here, nothing happens. It's all based on where this elbow is in space. So that means that your, sh uh, your shoulder controls are what's going to be giving you your final deformations. Um, of your clavicle area. So even if we wanted to make our character sit down, we can come here and see how everything compensates. And how we can move everything around. So even if we zero everything out here, 
the back would still have that arch to it. So there's a lot of compensation going on. Um, and the newer version that I'm working on works even faster um, because it used a lot less constraints and it it's a little gives the animator a lot more control over the intensity of the auto hip controls um, and so with that um, you have any comments let me know once again the way I built this rig could be seen on digital tutors in their creative development um, series um, and the newer ones I'm going I will be have up soon where I show what the prototypes look like uh, and show a little bit of how fast they are by comparison to this the original control uh, setup that is known as the motion flow rig. So with that, if you have any questions, please post a comment. Um, looking for a lot of feedback as I develop this methodology of rigging even further. So thanks very much, and I'll catch you in the next video.